How much do I spend in a month as a 21 year old living in one of the most expensive cities in the world? Stay tuned and I'll go over my expenses and tell you exactly how much money I spent last month. Copenhagen is often in the top 10 of the most expensive cities in the world to live in. And that is based on cost of living, which includes anything from rent, to food to transportation. This year it actually ranked as the 11th most expensive city in the world. That's ahead of cities like Shanghai, London and LA, but still behind the likes of Hong Kong, Geneva or New York. Now living in Copenhagen comes with a lot of benefits, but also a lot of costs. And I'll tell you exactly how much I spent last month in a moment. So every month I make a budget and split my costs into different categories. So in a second, I'll go through some of the major categories. And then at the end, I'll tell you how much I spent and what I think I can do better. So the first category is going to be eating out, which I only spent $17 on this month. And that is actually very low. I luckily didn't go out to eat too much this month. So that's why it's pretty low along with things like bringing lunch to school instead of buying in the cafeteria since that gets very expensive very quickly. I also try to cook as much as I can at home. So usually I would make a pretty large meal and then save some for the next couple of days. Then the next category is going to be other which I spent $34 on. And this month it all went to buying a certain book I need for my university. And that is actually pretty cheap for a university book, but the reason is that I just rented it for a year online. Luckily, I didn't have to buy too many books, but uh, we'll see what happens in the future. It might get much more expensive. Then the next category is going to be alcohol, which I spent around $40 on last month, which is actually very low. And I did that mostly by not buying drinks when I'm out, but instead doing it before I go out. And a lot of people spend so much money on alcohol, especially in Denmark where it's a huge part of the youth culture and we do go out a lot. Next up is entertainment, which I spent $69 on. So that is actually not too bad this month, but I do like to sometimes spend a lot on entertainment since I would rather spend on experiences than random things I don't need, like a bunch of clothes or stuff like that. So the major expense last month was that I went to the Denmark versus France game, which we luckily won 2 know. So that was a good game to watch. And besides that, I also spent some money on Spotify, which is also in this category. But luckily, I have a student discount, so it's only like seven or eight dollars every month. Now, next up is a category which so many people spend a lot of money on, and that is clothing. So I spent eighty-six dollars on clothing this month, which was actually a bit over budget, but it was mostly since I needed some new clothes for working in. So I bought like some dress shirts and some pullovers that I can wear to work. And that cost me $86, which is actually cheaper than what I expected for what I had to buy. So I want to make one point about clothing, and that is that I already have way too much clothes. Imagine that someone took all the clothes you have back and gave you all the money you paid for it. How much of it would you actually buy back? Because I know personally, I would probably buy like 50 or 60 percent of it back which just says a lot about how much clothes I've bought in the past that I don't really need. But I have changed that recently and now I only buy what I really need and not a bunch of random clothes that I don't really use. Next up is going to be transport and I spent $92 on transport during the last month. And the reason why it's so low in a city like Copenhagen is because of public transport, which I use almost every day. And normally it is more expensive, but since I am a student, I can get it for much cheaper, almost half price. So that's a big benefit of being a student here. But I don't really know what I would do without it. The other options are biking everywhere, which is just miserable in the winter. And then there is always buying a car, but that's just insanely expensive, especially in Denmark. And you shouldn't need that in a big city like Copenhagen. And now for the second biggest part of my budget, which is going to be food. And I spent $163 on food last month, which is actually not that bad. But as I mentioned before, I try to buy in bulk and cook a lot at the same time. So that saves me a lot of money. I also try not to waste leftovers. So I often eat leftovers for lunch the next day or even dinner. And lastly, I try to not buy too much meat since it is really expensive, especially beef. So if I buy meat, it's going to be mostly chicken. And now for the biggest category in my budget, which you can probably guess what it is, and it's not even close to the second one. And that is housing for $937. So most of that is of course going to be rent, which is $830, which is actually not too bad for Copenhagen, but that is because it's housing only for students. 
and I have quite a small apartment with a shared kitchen. And outside of rent, I also spent money on insurance, which is huge and important since I don't want to face huge bills if something goes wrong or something happens. And then lastly is also furniture that is included in this part of the budget. And now for the total, which is gonna be $1,000. $368. And that includes some random things that I didn't include in the categories here. So I'm actually pretty satisfied with the amount I'm spending every month, especially because $830 of it is rent. And Copenhagen is a very expensive city to live in, as I mentioned. So I can't complain too much about the amount of money I'm spending. Of course, it varies a lot from month to month, but I am happy that I'm spending less than what I'm earning every single month, even after taxes. So some months I might only spend $1,200 and some months I might spend, let's say $2,000, but that all depends on which expenses come up or if I have to buy new things like a computer or a phone or something like that. So what do I do to keep this amount low every month? One of the most important things is student discounts, which I already mentioned. So I save a lot of money on things like Spotify, transport, or even if I have to buy clothes, since a lot of places you can still get student discounts. I also try to think about the purchases I'm making. Do I really need this? And I think about it for a couple days. And very often I come up with the answer that I don't really need this and then I don't buy it. And I'd rather spend more money on experiences than a bunch of things I don't really need. So what could I do to make my monthly expenses lower? Well, the most important thing I could do would be to move to a different and cheaper place. But I do like where I'm living a lot and it's not that much more expensive than other places in Copenhagen. An important point I wanna make is that you still have to have fun even though you're trying to save money. So as I mentioned, I would like to spend on experiences instead of stuff that I don't need. So that's kind of a compromise I make where I prioritize some things over others. Now you might be wondering, how am I paying for this as a student? Well, most of the money is coming from my job, but I will make another video detailing what income I have and how much I earn in another video. Now, if you want to track your spending like I am, make sure to watch this video about how to budget and what advantages it has for you. And I'll see you over there.